Hello and welcome to Water from the Valley, a Dry Valley Baptist Church podcast. I'm Pastor Michael, sitting across from the table with Pastor Lee, and the title for today's episode is Leadership Fatigue and How to Fight Against It. That is right, Pastor Michael. That's the topic of discussion today, and I hope that it'll help leaders on every level, uh, pastors, uh, associate pastors, discipleship pastors, Amen. you know, <laughs> but not just pastors. You know, I, th- I think this episode will also help other leaders uh, within the church world. And even I think uh, we can apply the principles we're talking about today to leaders in the secular world as well. If you uh, maybe are a manager uh, somewhere or uh, some kind of uh, business owner, I think today's topic can uh, help all of us because leadership fatigue is a real thing. Sometimes you can um, just do and do and do and do so much that it just becomes more of a burden mm-hmm. than than um, an, an enjoyment of leading. And so, yeah, today we're going to talk about leadership fatigue and, and how to fight against it and hopefully help some folks out there today um, just understand from a spiritual level uh, how to Keep going when you feel like you want to give up. Thank you for joining us at the table as we have conversations for our growth in His glory. Heading into our recommended reads portion of today's episode, the book that I want to recommend to our listeners today is falling into Pastor Lee's category, not necessarily... Mm -hmm. A Christian book, more a book on leadership with yeah. very uh, Christian themes behind it. Yeah. You know, and I think uh, King Solomon is introduced. Mm-hmm. The angel Gabriel mm-hmm. is is a character in this story. But it, that book is The Traveler's Gift by Andy Andrews. This is a book that Pastor Lee actually recommended to me not too long ago, and I could not put it down. That's a good one. I mean, I think I finished it in two days max. Yeah, it's one of those that if you have the time, you're going to get it done. It is a narrative story and just, I mean, super interesting. Yeah. Our character visits uh, various historical figures and learns a valuable lesson from each of them. And so just you're ready to get to that next leader and, and see who it is and find out what that lesson involves. I mean, just a wonderful book with, with many great uh, lessons to learn that yes. I would highly recommend to any leader, any anyone just looking for the better characteristics of of how to live your life. Essentially, yeah, yeah, it's a great book. I it was it was a book given to me during my Chick fil A days, and uh, an old boss of mine from Atlanta who would come and visit our store, and it, it, it literally uh, it was a book that changed the trajectory of my life because it changed how I. I looked at leadership and yeah. just life in general. So the book I want to recommend today is also a book, not necessarily a leadership book, uh, but it's a it's a leadership book for the home. It's called Transforming Children into Spiritual Champions by George Barna. As, as parents, um, our job is to lead our children, and uh, we don't always um, – know everything to do you know the 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 joke is i wish children come with an operating manual and that is true because there's times you think what in the world should i do in this situation or that situation but this book by george barna which he's a big um church uh research guy and um does a lot of statistical work anyway uh the book in simplest terms talks about cultivating a biblical worldview uh, to learn and think and act like Jesus and how to do that in your children. Uh, but he, he asked the question, how can the church and parents teach children something that they don't really know about themselves, how oh, to yeah. live out the world, you know, this Christian worldview. And so many parents have never really had early spiritual training. So they uh, li- really kind of just look to the church to provide it for their children. The problem is is for a long time, the church has usually focused on the teens and the adults failing to really realize that a child's moral development is set by the age of nine. And so George Barna really gets into statistics and how to um, really cultivate a a Christian worldview and mindset in children by the age of nine. 
and, wow. and teach them about Jesus. So again, this is Transforming Children into Spiritual Champions by George Barnett. All right, folks, again, we are welcoming me, welcoming you in today. Say that for me. Welcoming? Yes. Perfect. Well, we are welcoming you in today to Water from the Valley podcast, uh, a weekly podcast here from Dry Valley Baptist Church. Our discipleship pastor, Pastor Michael, and myself is uh, are, are just honored every week that you have chosen to uh, take a moment of your day, a moment of your week to sit down and... Uh, discuss just some relevant topics in the church world in the world today pastor michael uh i, I forget where where's the podcast reaching now i know we we mentioned russia a few weeks ago uh, uh man i think russia poland is one that i heard uh that's france crazy yeah just wild like we need to start like getting some kind of app to teach us how to oh, yeah. speak french and polish and stuff what's it's, that app called uh do Duolingo, maybe. Yes, like we're like at least you need to become bilingual yeah. or something because if we're starting to reach all these other countries, man, we gotta figure out how to um, cater to their preference. Cater, yes, yes. So if you're listening from France today, uh, hopefully within the next few weeks, Pastor Michael will be speaking a little bit of French and and uh, you can listen. But I just find it amazing that here here we are in little Somerville, Georgia. And, and literally, God is just growing this ministry to reach around the world. Yes, a blessing. It's wild, man, to think about. Like, the the dream of this was really just to minister to our people here in our church and to give them, you know, resources to think about and listen to during the week. Right. And then that went to, well, there's folks in our community that's heard about it, and they've subscribed. And now, man, here we are. Uh, around the world, it's crazy to think about. In it just is. a matter of weeks. I mean, I don't know how long we've been doing this now, but I mean, it's not like it's been even six months. So, yeah, that's it. You heard it here first. Water from the valley going on tour soon. <laughs> yes, yes. We will could be coming to a city near you soon <laughs> and buy your tickets today. All right, guys, let's talk about leadership fatigue. It, it, this is a real thing. It, it was something whenever I first started out in pastoring that really wasn't talked about much. And um, because of that, you would see a lot of preachers dropping out of the ministry because they felt like um, they couldn't live up to the task because no one else was burnt out. No one else was fatigued like they are. And so they must just not have what everybody else does. So they just leave the ministry or. Well, when you, when you think of, you know, becoming a pastor, what, what you think of 90% of the job is preaching. That's what mm -hmm. you first initially right. think. So mm -hmm. oh, if I just am a good preacher, you know, I'll, I'll yep. be successful. I'll be a good pastor. But that's not at all the case. No. You know, it, almost a majority of it is that pastoral leadership, yep. that example that you're setting. Yeah, you usually think 90% of my work will be in the pulpit, but it's rather opposite. Oh, very opposite. 90% of your work is outside the pulpit and ministering to people – and not only other people, but your own family and and to yourself. And whenever you're getting pulled in this direction, that direction, you've got this to-do list, that to-do list, really burnout becomes a real thing. It, it becomes a uh, something that you battle with. I have battled it multiple times through my ministry. I, it's hard for me to believe, but this month, no, this is we're, we're recording this in July. Next month, in August of 2024, um, I'll be celebrating 25 years of ministry. And in those 25 years, multiple times, I have kind of wanted just to throw in the towel and and just say, forget it. Is it worth it? And then, you know, God kind of manifests himself in some way and encourages me to keep yeah. going. And so this topic today, I know, is back in the day was a little faux pas, like you just don't talk about it, but... Uh, I am thankful that through the years, uh, pastors are becoming more open, and even leadership in general, leaders um, in the secular world as well, are becoming more open to this topic so that we can have real conversations about it. So what are some signs of leadership fatigue, and then what are ways and suggestions in which we can fight against it? And so 
Uh, we have a list of just several different things here. I don't know if we'll get to all of them or not, but uh, Pastor Michael, we'll just start out with number one, okay? okay? And that is uh, one sign of leadership fatigue is living by a, quote, get me through the day philosophy. You may begin the day with prayer, but surviving the day is your prayer thing. Mm -hmm. And so um, I've been there. Like, I just want to get through today. Uh, I'm burnt out. I don't want, don't like to admit this, but there's been times I have even had the attitude. I just don't care today. Sure. You know, I, I'm overloaded. I am, again, I'm maybe burnt out. Or maybe I've been hurt in some way. Um, either somebody has um, meant to hurt me or maybe they didn't mean to hurt me, you know. Uh, or I always say uh, to any pastor, never take Mondays off because you're so drained spiritually and mentally and emotionally from Sunday. You take Mondays off and you just sit at home and do nothing, you're going to quit. Yeah. And so keep yourself busy. And so um, – uh, there's this mindset of I'm just I just want to get through the day. So, what are some ways, some 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 suggestions to help fight against this attitude of I just want to get through the day? One of them I think is to ask God each day to help you see glimpses of His work, like an answered prayer or a restored relationship. What what's your thoughts there, Pastor Michael on? This first suggestion, just asking God to let you see glimpses of, hey, I am still working in your life. Yeah. Don't don't give up today. Mm. Uh, talk talk to us about that for a minute. I just I just think this, that this philosophy is so deceptive. Uh, mm. You know, whether it's a get me through the day, I'm notorious for get me through this season. Yes. You know, if I can just make it till you know I can come on less hours at work or something mm -hmm. till I'm full time. Um, just whatever that may look like, get me through this time. What you're, what you're banking on, what your hope is in, is in a break. It's mm. in some kind of vacation, whether it be a day, whether it be a, a week-long vacation to restore you, essentially. Yeah. You're, gonna, you're saying, okay, if I can just make it to this time where I can take a step back. Yeah. But, but the thing with that is, even when that comes, it's right back right after. Yeah, you know? right there. When, when we see in the Gospel of Matthew, come ye all who mm. are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Yes. God isn't saying, I'll give you a week off. Right. I'm, I, I'll give you coffee to make it through. Right. He's saying, I will give you the rest. So what that looks like is is watching for those glimpses yes. of his work, and, and it's receiving rest even amidst work. Yes. Now that sounds crazy, but... It's allowing God to restore your soul and grant you a rest and peace, even in the midst of chaos all around you, maybe. Mm -hmm. And I think another glimpse, just in a practical sense, I think that we could look for is maybe even an encouragement from somebody. Mm -hmm. Like maybe you're at work and, and again, you just have that mindset of I want to get through the day or uh, you're, it's a Sunday and it's busy or your ministry's changing in some way and somebody just coming and patting you on the back and just saying, you're doing a great job or, Hey, I love sure. you. Those I think are glimpses of God saying, Hey, I'm with you. Don't give up. Don't let this season stop you, you know, whatever. And so I think it's just intentionally looking for those ways, uh, that God is saying, stay in the battle, stay in mm. the fight. Um, is what we need to do. Those, those, I guess you could call them looking for those small victories as well. Sure. You know, you, you've heard that comment before, that uh, statement before, but but I, but it's actually watching for those glimpses and and trust that God will show you those things. Yeah, that God, I need a pat on the back today. It may just be one little pat of somebody saying, "How you doing today?" But you know that one thing God is using to say, "Hey." I'm with you. Don't give up. Don't give in. It's it's almost a very pessimistic, defeatist kind of attitude. Mm -hmm. And uh, God, just help me to survive the day. Mm -hmm. Lord, just get me through. You know, our goal shouldn't be to survive in the day and do the bare minimum. Yeah. Just get these things check off, checked off our checklist. Yep. But to thrive, thrive in yes. that day. Yes. You know, we have a living hope. Hallelujah. You know, God, don't just 
help me to survive, but Lord, help give me the strength to to make today great. Yes. I mean, Hallelujah. I know. I, I know. I can do that more often. Oh, buddy, me Man. too. It's that. It's that mindset. I I text one of the men in our church the other day. We were uh, just talking back and forth and and kind of just sharing devotion, not devotions really, but just different thoughts, texting back and forth that day, just trying to encourage each other. And, and I sent him a text that life is not a stinker if you ch- if we change our thinker. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and of course, he was like, that's good. And I thought, well, I wish I would have come up with that. <laughs> but, you know, but it is, it's that mindset of uh, allowing the Lord to transform how we think and transform uh, just our outlook of the day. Uh, and so begin with prayer, but also walk in prayer, walk in the spirit and ask God to show you these glimpses of his glory throughout the day. Uh, another thing uh, about leadership fatigue that often happens is just um, losing vision. Fatigue leaders don't consider vision beyond the end of the workday. Again, we're just trying to get through the day, yeah, checking off the list. So, um, while not, I would say while not ignoring the big picture, uh, I would strengthen your vision with one area, uh, maybe in the church. Let's just talk to pastors for a minute. Uh, strengthen your vision for just one area of the church that you're passionate about. So maybe you are losing your vision because you're tired or you're burnt out. Um, don't do away with the big picture of the church, but maybe just focus uh, a week or two just on one area of the church that you want to see sure. grow, whether it be children or youth or discipleship or whatever. Um, or maybe it's just one area in your own life that you want to um, strengthen prayer life, study life. And, and so when you get to that point, you're just ready to throw up your hands. You, you, you could care less about what five years down the road looks like, 10 years down the road. Just the whole concept of how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time. Yeah. So, you know, maybe just focus on one area or one aspect of your ministry or your leadership role and try to, um, bolster that up. bolster that yeah in in that area sorry i went i, I was looking at the computer and lost total I train saw, of thought i saw it go I it was gone it. man it was gone your eyes glazed over for a Dude, second. i was I like, like where am i at right now so anyway talk, talk to us about that maybe in again not wanting to get rid of the big picture but um just focusing on one area so that you just don't stop altogether yeah i, I think you know once our mindset become so so pessimistic like that uh you know i don't know if i've heard this before but it sounded good when i said it in my head <laughs> but an ill mindset for today makes a poor tomorrow oh yeah so let's write it down folks. yeah that's right that's write good it down big bold and straight you can quote that pastor michael yes right there. um but there's this sense of if you know if we forget the big picture if if we don't start taking those uh, smaller steps working towards a greater goal mm-hmm. then that greater goal is never it's never going to come yeah uh, so we have to do the small things today for the big things that may produce or grow in the future that's good yeah that's good i, I think another suggestion when it comes to losing vision is maybe talking to other local leaders about needs in the community your vision might expand when you see the world outside of your own church or outside of your own world that hey, I could do this in my church or this in my business because there's a need in the community that it could help. And so maybe looking outside of your own little sphere and working towards a goal of helping the community at large. I think you should have just several different big visions, big picture ideas of where, you know, maybe a community goal, a church goal. Yeah. But just, you know, don't limit yourself, don't box yourself in, but you do want to make sure that those goals are attainable yes. uh, and not impossible. So, you know, yeah. Something that you can really work towards. Yeah, you don't want to set a goal and, and it be unattainable and then you get depressed because now, you know, you're not even reaching. Right. You yeah. haven't made any progress. Yeah, that's right. Another problem with leadership fatigue is you develop poor sleep patterns and, uh, you know, the, the patterns may vary, but in, but in any case, you're, you're just exhausted all the time. And so, um, one thing that has helped me sleep has always been, if I can just be transparent here, um, a battle for me, 
because I do a, a lot of my thinking when I'm laying in bed. Yeah. It's, it's a distant friend. You know? It is. And, and, and so I have developed poor sleep patterns over the years. And so now I try to force myself to go to bed by a certain time, um, and wake up by a certain time. Now that doesn't always happen. For example, we're recording this, this particular, um, podcast on a Sunday afternoon this morning I was up at 2 a.m. on my porch sitting on my swing just praying and seeking God I thought maybe I needed to preach a, a different message than what I had lined up for this morning and and uh, really just not resting mm. in 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 God's provision and the and the thought he had already given me uh, but this happens a lot with leadership fatigue. We we don't sleep well because something's always on our mind. And so uh, I would say one thing that would help with this is just read scriptures that address resting in God. For example, Psalm 4, verse 8, Proverbs three twenty four, and let the word of God bring comfort. Yeah. Because that is our source. It, 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 it is our foundation of truth. And so what, as discipleship pastor, um, Give, give us a thought that you have there about resting in the Word of God, the why God has given us the Word to rest in because it is our pillar and foundation of, of truth. Oh, man. I love the cue into that because it brought me to, to an answer. I was like, over here thinking, okay, Psalm 23. Yeah. I love where, yes. where it says, He makes me. Makes me lie down. Lie down. Mm, that's oh, good. You know, sometimes, you know, we, we have this mindset of, there's so much, to, so much to do, uh, and that I've got to get done today. Mm. But there's always going to be something after that. There's always going yeah. to be something more that we need to do or could be doing. Yep. So even when you know I've, I, my checklist is two pages long and I'm swamped, yeah. Uh, God makes me lie down. That's awesome, bro. I, mean, I didn't even think about that. He, he makes me rest, even when when I can't make myself, even when I don't want to rest. He knows I need rest, and he. And it's like our bodies. Our bodies mm-hmm. will shut down after yes. a certain time. Mm-hmm. We need sleep. It's yes. a it's a physical need of our bodies, and and we also have that spiritual need yeah. of of we need rest and we need time That's and true. in God's uh, God's word and in prayer with Him. Yes, I also think about Acts. I believe it's chapter twelve. Peter's in prison, and uh, Herod is looking to kill him. The Bible says after Easter. And uh, James has already been killed, it said. He'd been beheaded. And because it pleased the Jews or because it made them happy that James was beheaded, Herod decides, well, I'm going to kill Peter also. And so he knows his head is literally going to be on the chopping block. But it says that night prior to his execution, he lays in his jail cell and he sleeps. Mm -hmm. So much so that an angel shows up at the prison to help him escape to get him out and he don't even know the angel is is in the room i i don't know about you i've never seen an angel but i can only assume if one ever walked into the room you're going to know it's there sleeping or not sleeping and but this angel the bible said had to smoke peter and was like hey bro get up we got to get out of here you know Uh and it's just a i think it's another picture of peter just resting Yes. And in God's will for his life, you know, allowing that, that I believe it's Proverbs chapter three. We know the um, first part of that chapter talks about lean not on your own understanding mm-hmm. and all your ways acknowledge him. But later in that chapter, it says that you trust in the, in the words of God and your sleep shall be sweet. Wow. You know, even, so, even on the first part of that, uh, that you were talking about, mm-hmm. you know, it's, beyond understanding sometimes yes like how can he sleep knowing that he is about to be executed mm-hmm. essentially you know it it doesn't make sense to the world it doesn't make sense to us sometimes but yeah he is able to give us rest even in those situations yeah and, and i also think about the psalms you know the the god of israel never sleeps or slumbers i used to have this picture hanging up in my room whenever i was a kid i remember it vividly it hung over the closet door uh, it said, uh, uh, give your troubles to God and go to sleep. He'll be up all night anyway. Oh yeah. You know? And so uh, as leaders, it's hard to do that sometimes. Um, uh, but we need to develop good sleep patterns because you're, you're never going to make good decisions if you're, if you're physically exhausted. Right. And so, um, 
a lot of people make fun of me because I'm like, Hey, it's eight o'clock. It's after my bedtime, you know? Uh, but I, I, I've tried to, lots of times that doesn't happen. Lots of times I'm not in bed by eight o'clock, but you know, it's just trying to set some kind of goal to get in bed by a certain time to get up by a certain time. Uh, so you, you're physically not exhausted. Cause again, as leaders, you don't make good decisions whenever you are. So yeah, Pastor Lee goes to bed at eight. I'm over here. Oh, it's midnight. Time to start my paper. <laughs> Poor guy. Oh. Jeez. What's another sign of, of, uh, Leadership fatigue, I, I would say for pastors, church leaders, and that's declining spiritual disciplines. Weariness leaves little room for anything like Bible study, prayer that requires discipline. So I would say reading one or more verses a day or praying one or more minute each day is positive. So to do that, read a little more, pray a little longer, uh, Make make yourself find time for these disciplines, because if not, you're going to say, I've got this to do. Mm-hmm. Again, you're just trying to check the boxes off. And so uh, discipline yourself for these spiritual things that you need, prayer time, worship, even personal worship time. Yeah. So uh, thoughts on, have you ever struggled with that? Um, if not, um, you know, what, what are some things you do every day to help uh, yourself, Pastor Michael, stay disciplined in study and prayer because you are a busy person. You, oh, yeah. you, you, you work, you, you have a pastoral role here, you're going to school. So how, how does somebody maybe even with your schedule keep up with these spiritual disciplines? And, and I'll just say right off the bat, it's a struggle for even me. You know, I struggle through time, seasons of where these, of those declining spiritual disciplines. Yeah. It seems like this the first thing to go. Yeah, because our flesh is so willing to to give those up, yeah. and we have to be intentional to walk in the spirit. We have to be intentional in making ourselves, even when we're busy, even when we don't want to, even when it means five or ten more minutes of sleep. Mm. We have to make ourselves get up and and pray. Uh, that 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 is one where you know take a take a respite throughout the day. Yeah, and and just. Wherever you are, you know, it doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be drawn out. Right. I'll be at work and I will just stand where I'm at and just close my eyes and pray right there. Mm. But, and, and it's just setting those routines, setting those reminders that I'm not going to let the chaos of my environment or the world, uh, separate me from God. I'm not going to let whatever is, is in my life right now, keep me from, from God. And when you have those reminders and when you have those routines in place, it brings you back. Wow. It calls you back and, and, and you see that need. That's good. Yeah. We, we've got a gentleman in our church who I know he sets alarms on his phone throughout the day mm. at specific times just to remind him to pray. And again, it might just be a quick prayer at work. It might be just a quick, Hey God, I really need your help today. Kind yeah, of prayer. Yeah. You know, it might just be, you know, one of those things, but um, it, it's again, disciplining yourself for prayer yeah. because it is easy. You know, you've got papers to write, you've got sermons to prep, you've got, you know, different, uh, ministries you're running, uh, you know, Bible study today I'll put off cause I've got to really get this yeah, organized. Sure. And, and, and even as a full-time pastor, it happens as well. Your, your schedule sometime doesn't turn out that day like you thought it was going to and so uh you put off personal bible reading time because you have to hurry up and prep for a funeral you weren't prepared for Mm -hmm. you know and so um it is just disciplining yourself being strategic and and realizing that you've got to pour into yourself before you're able to pour into others yeah keep yourself accountable uh have others keep you accountable too yeah because that's good. Uh, other people can often see before you notice. Yeah. And when you do notice, it's it's still you have to be intentional in making yourself. One thing that I've lost recently is uh, reading a chapter a day of of just a Christian literature book. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, doing the recommendations on here, I'm I'm running out of books because it I've just been so busy that yeah. that time has been lost. Yeah. Where okay, I know that I need to restore that time. Mm-hmm. And it's still hard to do that. Yeah, yeah. It, I, I, I think more people are there than we think. Oh yeah. Uh, 
And so I, I hope that the episode today is helping you. Let's just look at a couple more, Pastor Michael, before we close out this this week's episode. Another thing that happens uh, in leadership fatigue or burnout is frustrating family members. Leaders who fight to get through the day often dump on their family when they get home. I I am I'm not proud of this, but I've done this more times than I am proud to say. Uh, it's easy to kind of unload, not because you're mad at them, but you you just got all of this weight. You've got all of these things you're dealing with. You come home, and maybe your wife says, "Hey, how was your day?" And that's all it takes, and you just sure. you're just a garbage dump man. You just unload, and so uh, oftentimes it's easy to frustrate family members and just to dump on them when you get home. So uh, just a couple of suggestions uh, I would I would give you is don't talk about work for the first two hours when you get home. Spend that time focusing on your family. Another thing is give your spouse permission to say, honey, you are putting too much on me, and then stop. That, that's one thing uh, I, whenever I counsel newlyweds or about to be newlyweds is, uh, have some kind of uh, safe word, some kind of stop word that if, if things are starting to get heated or the conversation is, is not going like it should, uh, to be able to say that word and the spouse has to stop talking. Because whenever, again, I hate to say this, but when I start unloading, if Christina says, hey, how was your day? And I just start unloading, mm-hmm. it's hard to stop sometimes, sure. you know. and uh, And so... Uh, you're newly wed. I don't know if you have experienced that yet or if Miss Kelsey Pearl has unloaded on you yet, but um, so I, I think a, a, a good thing is just to have some kind of word that says, hey, we got to stop this conversation and move on because it is so easy just to dump on the family. Yeah, sometimes, you know, you just need to take a second and maybe even before heading in, mm-hmm. um, but maybe it's maybe it's in your house. You set aside that time. When you get home from work or, or after some event at where you essentially just kind of compartmentalize it. Okay, this is work. Yes. Now this is home. Uh, I wish somebody would have taught me that whenever, especially whenever I was a younger father, because lots of times I would bring my work home mm-hmm. and I wouldn't focus on my children like I should, or I'd be so tired physically. I wouldn't give them the time they needed. I wish somebody would have coached me or discipled me on again like you were saying compartmentalizing your life that hey when you're at work you give 100 percent. you need to figure out a way when you're at home to give 100 percent as well yeah after like right after our wedding on our honeymoon actually um, me and kelsey had a lot of stuff that we needed to do uh, so we said before like hey we may have to do schoolwork or something on yeah. on our honeymoon uh kelsey had a lot of school assignments that were coming up uh I had to teach Sunday school right after, yeah when you came back right when yeah. I came back um, and just different things going on, but it came down to it and we didn't do a lick of it. We yeah. said, okay, this is our honeymoon. Yes, we're just we're just gonna worry about it when we get back. Good, good. Let, let me give you one more today and and again, uh, maybe you have something you want to add to this list or uh, comment we want you to reach out to us. The last one Pastor Michael will talk about today is just, Sometimes when you get fatigued, you get burnt out as a leader, uh, you start to avoid people who speak truth into your life. Um, when we know we're tired of leading, it's just easier to avoid people who know us well enough to recognize the problem. Um, we just Sometimes we like surrounding ourselves with yes men, and um, I've done it. Yeah, I, I've done it plenty of times, and so we just – we just avoid those people who tell us the truth. So I, I would say don't avoid those persons. Invite them to lunch or invite them to supper, to a phone conversation, share your burdens, and then choose to listen to them more than complain. Uh, allow them to speak truth into your life to help you during these seasons that of fatigue. Well, like with, with any rebuke, I think our first reaction is defense. Yeah. Oh, they're saying something. True. I need to defend myself, even if it's true. Yeah, you know, you could say something completely true, uh, in a rebuking way to me right now, and I'd probably try to defend myself. That yeah. would, that would be that's just what we initially do. That's our first reaction. But 
you that's know, just human nature. It is. It's yeah. human nature. But listen, uh, you know, take a second to take that in and, you know, don't respond right away. You don't have to respond yeah. right away, but. But truly listen, try, try to come with understanding from why they feel a need, mm -hmm. because if it's at the point where they, they don't want to rebuke you, you know, yeah. and, and hopefully they don't, no one, no one should want to just Correct. go around rebuking others. Yeah. But, You're a terrible person. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, try, so they, they see a need to tell you this. So tr tr take it in, yeah. really, really listen to it. Give it weight before. You Be know, quick to listen, slow to speak. Slow to speak. Yeah. yeah. Slow to anger. Exactly. Uh, because that's that is human nature. That's what we just want to do. We, we just want to defend ourselves. Oh, that's not true. Uh, yeah. Oh, or this come up with an excuse when oftentimes you know, the answer is yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, you're right. I probably do need to do better about that. Yes, absolutely. Well, guys, thank you again for joining us today. Uh, leaders, pastors that are out there, know that you're not in this alone. Uh, maybe you don't have anybody to speak truth into your life or encouragement. You don't feel like you do. Pastor Michael and I would love to talk to you. We'd be honored to have prayer with you. Uh, reach out to us and uh, let us know how we can help. Maybe there's something specific you, you need advice on or counsel with. We, we'd be absolutely honored to uh, to help you. But just know you're, you're not alone. Most of us are in some area of fatigue or weariness in our leadership journey. So uh, just know you're not out there alone. Pastor Michael, if you have any closing thoughts, you can share those with us and then close us out in prayer today. I would just challenge our listeners today to continue to just have your eyes set upon God. Yes. You know, with everything going on, with our with our checklist mentality of today's culture, with the many things that that are vying for our attention and for our time, uh, make time for God. Yeah. Let that be our first priority. Mm. Don't neglect our times of prayer, our, our times of study in, in God's Word. Uh, and when we do, uh, recognize that. Yes. Recognize our need. Uh, never stray away too far. And when we do, we need to, to realize that and bring ourselves back as quick as we can into the center of God's will. Yes. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray, God, for those that are out there today that are tired. God, those that are heavy laden, that are weary, that have been beaten down by the pressures of the world and the expectations of it. God, I pray, Lord, that we just remember that you are in control, God, and while we struggle to get by through the day, Lord, or through the season, uh, Lord, you have everything already planned out for us. And you are working all things for our own good. So, Lord, help us to find rest in you, God. That is the only place that we will find the rest that we need. So, Lord, I pray if there are those out there today that are searching for this kind of rest, God, that they will, they will turn to you. Lord, help us to lift up one another. Help us to encourage one another, God. Uh, Lord, we just need that kind of encouragement, that kind of affirmation. And Lord, that's what you've given us the church and Christian community for. So God, just help us to continue to live in a way that brings you glory, God, and not get bogged down by the weight of the world, Lord, but God, to just continue to seek your face. All of these things, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, everybody. Again, thanks for joining us today for Water from the Valley. Reach out to us on social, and we'll see you next week on Water from the Valley.